But I notice you like wife, wife. I love wife. You like wife, wife. Wife, wife? I like wife as well, but I often say, this is my life partner. We no, got no, no, married no. 11, 11, 11. I'll come right and I say, oh, did you meet my wife? I want you to meet my wife. That's the first, I want to introduce you to my wife. How oh, we don't get any tickets today? Because I know New York will give you tickets. No, you're not. I hope not. Great neighborhood. Are you kidding me? I don't know how to drive. I'm Miss Daisy. You used to know how to drive, you said. Oh, yes. I mean, if I'm forced to. Hi, Gail Marquis, campus of Queens College, and I'm being inducted into the inaugural class, the first class of the Queens College Athletic Hall of Fame. In the middle of going to college, I went there to play basketball, and I was lucky enough to play for our U.S. Olympic team. It was the first time they ever had women's basketball at the games. I also came home with a silver medal, which I did not plan. Everybody loves Gail. If I go somewhere, well, where's Gail? The, even the mayor, where's Gail? And then when Gail is someplace, well, where's that crazy lady? I'm the crazy lady. I grew up in Queens, St. Albans, Queens, New York. There were five of us growing up, and I was a middle child. I always like to say confused. We were five in the family. As I told you, I had two older brothers. I was born in Harlem, so I'm a, I'm a native Harlem person. I like to tell everybody that I was born, bred, toasted, buttered, jelly, jammed, and honeyed in Harlem. I was a model, and I modeled from 15 until I was about 26. I was a fashion commentator for Ebony Magazine, a fashion editor for Vogue Magazine. And now I live on 55th Street, just off Fifth Avenue, and Donald Trump moved in my neighborhood. I work out of my home suite office. It's my small business called The Ground Crew, and we do fashion shows, fashion shoots, and fashion videos. And I've been in business for 35 years, dressing those models and getting them out there, ready to rock and roll down that runway. I was a pro ball player in America, in the south of France, later on commentating also for the WNBA. Then I decided let me go to Wall Street because it was very competitive. Between Merrill Lynch, J.P. Morgan Chase, personal banker, decided I liked it, this is where I'm gonna stay. We keep two residences between New York and New Jersey, so it's nice to have two places to go. And I love coming here. When I get here, I'm a whole nother person. I sleep much better when Gail is in the bed than I sleep when I'm by myself. I feel so secure. And it's delicious. That she's there. No, we don't talk in the morning. Thank goodness. We do not speak in the she morning. She told me she does not speak in the morning. Me, I can speak all day long. But I, when I'm leaving here, I sweep her. That's okay. okay. We met officially on February 7th, 1999. We didn't start dating. Our first date was May 1st, 1999. Oh, gosh. Prior to that, only men had been in my life. Most of the men that I went out with were fabulous men. This friend of mine said, well, you know, you're doing really well, but you don't have a man in your life. And I said, well, I'm not looking for a man. So she said, well, if you were looking for somebody, what would you be looking for? Tell me about this man. Well, he'd have to be a BMW, a black man working. He'd have to be taller than me, smarter than me, younger than me. And would you believe within two weeks, I met Gail, so she's my BWW. She's 57 and I'm 75, so you just twist it around. So it's 17 and a half years difference she in the enjoyed, age. Evidently, she enjoys it. In the age. The age difference hasn't proven to be too much of an uh, inhibition outside of we're able to introduce each other. Maybe she wouldn't have come to a basketball game or to some of the clubs I might have gone to. I primarily dated women, only women, and I found that I wasn't as confident in the areas I wanted. I wasn't sure if the women wanted me for me or if they wanted the Olympian or if they wanted the jump shot, the pro ball players. And I had to get up the gumption to speak to this one, to speak to Audrey. I took a course called Landmark Education, and they asked me to come and do my little talk on how to look, feel like a million dollars and don't spend a million dollars. I had to pay $39 to go see her. So I put on my best, my best suit. And then by the end of the afternoon, you know, can we talk later on? And she was like, oh yeah, sure, sure. So during that week, she called me and she said, listen, I need to talk to you. I need your undivided attention, you know, sort of like stop. 
sit down, whatever you're doing. And I have something to tell you. What is it? I'm gay. I'm a lesbian. She's like, okay. I said, well, listen, I'd like to take you out on a date. So I said, well, what is a date? I said, a date to me is that you're going to pay for everything. You're going to pick me up, pay for the date, and then bring me home. She said, yes. I said, oh, that's great. So then I said, well, are you going to kiss me goodnight? I don't know why or what possessed me that's to say, said. are you going to kiss me goodnight? And then she said, well, I wanted to kiss you hello, but your place had so many people. There was so much confusion. Well, I didn't say all of that. I just said, what I wanted, I really wanted to kiss you hello. So I kissed her. Good night. And I said, wow, I felt different. I said, oh my God, what is that about? Oh, wow. I looked to make sure that she got through the lobby and then she went into her elevator and then I pulled down the visor in my car to look at the mirror and just check my lipstick to make sure her lipstick was on my lipstick and that it was really real. But I called my shrink, and he told me, Audrey, you're on your journey. Can you imagine? I said, but I told you everything, you know, my entire life. It must be somewhere in there that I liked, I liked women. No. She was just so comfortable with it. And it was just flowing <laughs> off of her lips that I'm in love with a woman, I'm in love with Gail. And so I couldn't be hidden. I couldn't be play small. She just made me much more comfortable. And that whole year... Audrey kept a calendar at her penthouse, just outside of her apartment door, a calendar 365 days. Wow. And she would check off when she saw Gail face to face, or when she spoke to Gail. Wow. And that was May 1st, all the way through the I December, forgot about December that. 31st. I was on the whole calendar every single day. I'm foremost in her mind. I'm first. She says, I'm first. Can you imagine? Well, aren't I first in your mind? Yes. We got married after 12 years. 12 and a time, half years. When the time came Because November's 11, May is 5, 7 years, 12 and a half years. The day was perfect. When you finally got out of the car and you came across Central Park West, <gasps> oh my God, she's so Gorgeous in that yellow jacket. Thank oh my you. God, you look I have fabulous. A yellow here to cover my neck. We had a good time. You had this beautiful scarf. I remember the scarf. Mm -hmm. I just said foulard. That's right. That's French for Ooh, scarf. I know. Yellow and I know. French for scarf. We have come together here in this holy place to witness and bless the joining of Audrey and Gail. May you know for each other that you are an awesome surprise in the world. <laughs> You're getting to be an old, boring couple already. No, we're not boring, Gail. That's the one thing we are not. What does our life look like for the next 20 years? Well, I'm going to work with the ground crew as long as I can work. I want to paint, and we're going to travel. Beyond that, we're going to look for good health. We yeah, we want to be continue together. without good health. Come on, push. Push. There you go. Work it. Push. One, two, three, four, five. Look at that. Not Six. too fast. Not too Eight. fast. Nine and ten. We help each other. We boost each other. You know, we're leaning on each other. We're committed wife and wife. We're committed life partners. We're committed to each other. Right? You said it. I can't say it any better okay, than that. Right now, we're coming up on our first anniversary. First yeah. anniversary is paper. Paper, yes. So you can, you can give me cash if you like. Uh -huh. I could also give you some nice tissue paper. That could be nice, too. Or a magazine or, or magazine. a book. You probably, could could probably go book. give me a book. I, could, I think I will. Just, I think I will. It's paper. I'll give you a book. That's paper. No <laughs> cash here. And beyond that... Cash would be so nice. 